Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to White Pine District Library Story Hour. Last week, we gave you a hint that had to do with this and this, the upper and the lower. And if you haven't figured it out, I'm talking about the state of Michigan. Michigan has the shape of a mitten. And then we have the upper peninsula. So we have the upper and we have the lower. Now, we live just about right there in the middle of the mitten. So we are almost the center of the mitten. And if you say to someone who asks where you come from, you can say, I'm from Michigan. And they know exactly what that means when you show them the hand. Now, it looks like a mitten. And some people live in the thumb. Some people live on the tips of the fingers. And some people live in the palm. And we live right in the palm. Today, we're going to read or tell a story about a folk tale that has to do with the formation of Michigan. A long time ago, there was a little boy who was born and he was named Paul Bunyan. Now, Paul was a very big boy and he continued to grow and grow and grow. And his parents couldn't keep him fed. They fed him all kinds of food, trying to keep him, keep his belly full. And he just kept growing and growing. And when he sneezed, sometimes it was said that when he sneezed, he blew all the birds out of the trees and clear to the west side of the country, to California. And when he coughed, it was as if the great state of Maine, where he was born, had an earthquake. Now, when Paul was growing, his parents decided they needed to get away from um, a lot of people and move into the wilderness. So they went west and they ended up in Minnesota, where Paul showed an interest in timber and being a lumberjack and being in the woods and learning about the animals and things. And they stayed there. And there was a lot of things to do in Minnesota that involved the cutting down of trees and being a lumberjack. And Paul became involved in that job. Well, as a young man, he woke up one snowy night and he could hear this sad moaning. And he went outside into the storm and he found an oxen. Well, the oxen, who is kind of like a cow, was blue. And he thought that, that oxen was blue because it was so cold. And as it turned out, that, that oxen was just a blue colored. And he named that oxen Babe. Babe the blue oxen. We have Paul Bunyan, who has the pet, Babe the Blue Oxen. Now, Babe was a great worker as well, and she helped Paul in the woods, and they took down trees, and they hauled them out of the woods. And it is said that the lakes in Minnesota are there because of the huge footprints of Paul and Babe the Blue Oxen moving trees out of the forest. Well, Paul didn't stay in Minnesota all the time. He traveled a little bit and he moved a little back east and he came into the area of Michigan and he dragged his great axe because he was tired. He had fallen a lot of trees that day and he dragged his great axe and in doing so it is said that he gouged out the great lakes which go all the way around our state of Michigan and 
That is why they say we have the Great Lakes. Now, we also have a lot of lakes here in Michigan, and they are also contributed to the footprints of Babe the Blue Oxen and Paul Bunyan. Now, Paul was such a big man. He ate a lot, and he used to make flapjacks or pancakes, and he'd eat them by the dozens in order to stay strong and be able to um, lumber the woodlands and take the trees so that areas would be cleared off for settlers to move in. And it is said that Paul used a big pine tree to comb his beard, which is kind of silly, but this is a folk tale. Now, it's said that Babe and Paul lived here. They also traveled further west. And it is also contributed to them that the Grand Canyon was formed. So they created a lot of landforms on the in the United States. I lost my frame of thought there for a minute. So we owe the state of Michigan's Great Lakes and the many lakes found within on the land to Babe and Paul Bunyan. And if you get a chance to travel north up by the Mackinac Bridge, or I should say past the Mackinac Bridge, you have to go across the Mackinac Bridge, there is a statue that is dedicated to Paul Bunyan and Babe the Big Blue Ox. Now, this is a folk tale. Was there a Paul Bunyan? Hmm. There might have been a large man that was named Paul, but he wasn't a giant big enough to dig out the Great Lakes and the many lakes in Minnesota and Michigan. But it's fun to Think about that. And if you go over the bridge into St. Ignace, just north of St. Ignace, you can find a statue that's dedicated to Babe and Paul. Now, when I was a kid, you could actually crawl up and sit on Paul's lap. But unfortunately, you cannot do that now. But you can still go and see him. So he is a piece of our uh, Michigan history and folklore. Now, some of the other things that are contributed or part of Michigan is this little guy right here. This little bird is a robin, and the robin is the state of Michigan's state bird. So, he is a very special bird to all of us that live in Michigan. We also have a state mammal, and that would be the white-tailed deer. We have a state tree, and that is the great white pine. And one of the ways that you can remember or recognize a white pine is that it has five needles in its little bundles on its branches. And that helps us remember lakes around the state of Michigan. We have five Great Lakes around the state of Michigan, and I always remember them because they their first letter spells homes, and Michigan is our home. So one is Huron, one is Ontario, one is Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, and then Lake Superior. And so that spells homes. And Michigan is my home. Michigan is your home. So that's a way to remember um, the names of the Great Lakes. Now, we have all kinds of books here at the library about Michigan. We also have books about Paul Bunyan. Here's one called Paul Bunyan. And it shows him there on the cover. And Here's a silly picture of Babe the Blue Ox. This one is a tall tale that is retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. 
that might be an interesting story to read. So there is that one. We also have got too many books in the way here. We also have several books by Kathy Jo Wargen and illustrated by J I never say his name right. Gisbert Van Franken, who is in, and I, I apologize if I butchered that. I'm pretty sure I did. His illustrations are beautiful. This one's called The Legend of the Loon. And this one tells a story about the loon. And the loon is a bird that we find in our lakes. And it has a very distinct call. And if you hear it, you will always know that it's a loon. It almost sounds like it has a wobble in its throat, and it can be kind of eerie, but it is very cool. This is one of my favorite birds. So you might like to read The Legend of the Loon. There is also a book by the same author and illustrator. And this one's called The Legend of Sleeping Bear. Sleeping Bear Dunes are up north and some of you may have already visited those and there are different stories about how those dunes were formed and that is what this story is about it's about a mama bear and two baby bears and you might really enjoy it although i will tell you it might be a little sad but it's a very interesting story there are we have several books by that same author and illustrator. This one's called The Legend of Mackinac Island. And some of you may have visited Mackinac Island. It's called The Great Turtle of the Great Lakes. Um, so you might be interested in reading this book. We also have by the same author and illustrator, the Legend of the Petoskey Stone. And I did bring a Petoskey Stone for you to see today. So those are all interesting books, and I like all of them. The illustrations are done very well, and I like the stories. But this is a Petoskey Stone. That is the last book that we talked about. The Petoskey Stone is our state stone. And if you look, there are little six-sided Oh, some people call them eyes. Some people think they look like little suns. But this was actually a coral that thousands of years ago used to live in the tropical area of what is now Michigan. And when it died out and was covered with dirt and other things, it became stone and it created the Petoskey Stone. These are always fun to find. Always like to look for them. And today in your busy bag, you might find something in the bottom. And my suggestion is if you find a stone in your busy bag, see if you can get it wet. Either hold it under your faucet with some help of with the help of an adult so you don't make a mess, but hold it under the the water and then see what happens. You'll probably see some of those little cells um, that make up the coral and now make up the Petoskey Stone. But that is something that's fun. We also have other books. Now, oops, Mr. Robin fell off his perch. There he is. You can also check out books like this. This is a book, it's a guide. It's called An Adventure Guide to Michigan. And it tells you all kinds of places that you can go all over the state, camping, museums, all kinds of activities. And we have books like these in the library. You might find those interesting and mom and dad might find them interesting. We also, now this is a book I have, but I believe it's here in the library too called Weird Michigan. Some of the strange things that people have seen in Michigan, and some of them are legends. I mean, there's a thing in here about Bigfoot and Sasquatch and things like that. So you might find a book like that interesting. There are all kinds of books here at the library that you might like to check out. 
and take home and read. Mr. Robin's having a hard time. Probably would help if I quit bumping his stand and knocking him off. Now, a few weeks ago, we did a finger play. And let's see if we can remember how to do it. And you need both your hands. And we need to be able to count. And we went one, two, three, four, five. I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I let him go again. Why'd I let him go? He bit my little finger, so which little finger did he bite? The little finger on the right. Do you remember that? Now, I chose this because we have to use our hands, and right there's our Michigan, but we also have a lot of lakes in Michigan, and there are a lot of fish in our lakes in Michigan, and if you've been lucky enough to go fishing, and catch a fish, you might have got bit on the finger. I don't know. Let's try that again. Here's our fingers. One, two, three, four, five. I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I let him go again. Why'd I let him go? He bit my little finger so. Which finger did he bite? That little finger on the right. So that's a little finger play. We can practice our counting and we can practice remembering those words. Now I found another little poem that you can say. It's called the season song. Winter, spring, summer, fall. There are seasons four in all. Look outside and you will see it is, well, it's fall. Yes siree. But I think pretty soon it's going to be winter, so we'd have to change that. So winter, spring, summer, fall, there are seasons for and all. Look outside and you will see it is fall. Yes, siree. So you'll find a copy of that in your bag and you can practice that. Um, also in the busy bags, there are some crafts for you to do. You're going to get the papers that you need to make this beaver. And you've got a cardboard tube to make the log there. You know what? Your beaver may not look just like this one. This is just something to look at and give you an idea where to go and what direction you kind of want to go. But you know what? Your beaver is going to look a little different. Have fun. Maybe your beaver is... Swimming a different way. Maybe there aren't any flowers. Who knows? Maybe the lily pads aren't there. Maybe there's sticks. Who knows? But that's a beaver that you can make. And we do have beavers that live in our lakes here in Michigan. I also put in some paper and um, a paper plate in there so you can make Mr. Robin. Remember, Mr. Robin's our state bird, so there's some orange paper in there. There is some brown paper in there, and you can make a robin. Now, does your robin have to look just like this robin? No, it does not. You make your robin how you would like it to look. Maybe he's flying. Maybe his wings are open and he's flying away. Maybe he's sitting on a branch. I don't know. It's your robin. You make it the way you'd like to make it. Now, there's some other fun things in your bag, but I'm not going to tell you because they're a surprise, and surprises are shh. Now, there is another craft project in there, and this might require a little help from Mom and Dad. And in the baggie, you're going to find a picture of what you're making, and you're going to find a little stick, and there is a little point on there, so you need to be careful. You're going to find some corks. You're going to find rubber bands. And you're going to find a piece of foam. Now, what are you making? Well, I hope that you make something similar to this. Is it going to look just like this? No. It's going to be yours. And it'll be unique to you. So you make it the way you would like to look like it to look and then you will have a boat 
and you can float your boat in the tub or in the sink, but make sure you get mom and dad to help you. And if you have Legos, maybe your little Legos men can float around on the boat. That's up to you. Now, there are several pages in there in the busy bag for you to color and to do, oh, I don't know. I think there's a maze. I think there are some letters. And then there's the Snokey Pokey. The Snokey Pokey is a song sung to the Hokey Pokey. And you guys have all done the Hokey Pokey because we've done it here in the library. It's that song where you put your right foot in, you take your right foot out, you put your right foot in, and you shake it all about. You do the Hokey Pokey and you spin yourself around. That's what it's all about. You remember that one? This is the same type of thing it goes like this it goes you put your right mitten in so i have my owl friend with me and he's gonna put his wing in because he doesn't have a mitten put your right mitten in you take your right mitten out you put your right mitten in and you shake it all about you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around that's what it's all about and then you can do your left mitten you put your left mitten in, you take your left mitten out, you put your left mitten in, and you shake it all about, you do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You can put your boot in, you can put your right boot in, you can put your left boot in, you can put your hat in, and you can put your whole self in. So, this is something you can do at home. Maybe you've got older brothers and sisters and maybe mom and dad and you can all do the snokey pokey. So you can do that in the living room. You can practice that. Remember, you put it in, you take it out, you put it in and you shake it all about and you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself, or snokey pokey, turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Okay, so you have some fun with the busy bags. You can get a busy bag by just calling the library, or you may send us a message through email or through our um, Facebook. Um, you can also pick up a busy bag here at the library and maybe pick up a few books about Michigan. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our story hour today. It's time to go already. But next week, I don't know, next week, let's see if Mr. Owl can help us out. We need a clue for next week. Next week, we're going to do something about <gasps> mm, He says that the clue for next week is sometimes I am I and sometimes I am me. Hmm. I wonder what that means. Sometimes I am I and sometimes I am me. So you think about that and we'll see what happens. I hope to see you here next week at the White Pine District Library Story Hour. And come in and see us and get some books to take home and enjoy with your family. Have a nice day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.